So, in today's Coach's Corner, I'm going to pick the brains of Andrew Cordery, the high performance manager of South Australian Gymnastics, and also a FIG3 judge who's judged at the 2013 World Games and the 2014 Youth Olympics. So, join me down at the gym. We're going to have a chat to Andrew. Today I'm here with Andrew Cordery, and today we're going to be looking at learning the giant swing on bars and high bar for men. So Andrew, what are some of the key things that we're looking at in um, finding whether a gymnast is ready to start doing giants or not? If you th think of a giant swing, it's just a swing. So if a gymnast is showing good confidence with swinging on the bars, with doing loops or, or grips, um, and had some experience with the backward roll or forward roll, depending on which giant you're you're teaching, with good physical preparation, it's just an extension of those two skills. Excellent. So what are some of the, the key features that we're looking at um, in a giant? What makes a good giant? Well, so to, to understand the swing, there needs to be a shortening of the centre of gravity moving closer to the bar on the way up, either side, depending on which swing you're doing, uh, and a lengthening of the, the arm or the centre of gravity moving away from the, the bar on the way down. That can be achieved a number of ways, either by bending the knees to move the centre of gravity, bending the hips, or dishing through the body, which is generally a more accepted version in competition gymnastics. Excellent. And so what are some of the common faults that we're going to see? Uh, you see a lot of gymnasts maybe trying to force it a bit too early, not understanding the, the body tension. So if you don't have poor, poor body control, you're always going to struggle. And handstand is a position that needs to be strong, strong support, and really good core strength to make the spoon more easy. All right, so I understand that you've got a couple um, drills that you've set up, um, so we'll go have a look at them. So body tension is critical, so you've got to make sure you've done all the work before you get ready for the giant swing, starting with uh, dish rocks, it can be with bent knees initially to make it a bit easier for the gymnast, then extend the arms above the shoulders, and then finally extending the, the knees as well to become a, a full dish rock making sure as they rock back their hips lift off the floor so they're tight through their stomach and as their feet come down keep the arms back behind the ears. Extended front supports, great way to check body tension. Ben slides out, gets harder and harder to hold. Lucky he's a superman. And you can put a, a furniture slider under their feet to increase the challenge as well, protects them from carpet burn on their toes. The important part is that you always keep pressure back on the bar through the shoulders. So we can practice that through these little extended rolls. And you can see Ben keeping pressure back so his shoulders are lifting off the ground. Obviously... The giant is a backward roll, you know, so we need to have that orientation in their mind about rotating backwards. So you're starting obviously with a backward roll and even at this stage you can be teaching that pressure through the, the arms, so the shoulders lifting up early, finishing a little bit past the hands. It comes backward roll to extended front support. And we can start to increase the height of the finished position, which means Ben is going to be opening his body a little bit earlier each time. The arch or that of the swing, you want to make sure you're extending long through the shoulders. So by using the bungee cord, it forces Ben to push forward into the stretch rather than just being loose through his body. So make our body long in the down swing. It's not just about being straight, you've also got to push the bar away to so really extend the shoulders as far away from the bar as possible. Right, so once he understands that position, he can practice the, the bail. Well, apart from handstand, it's staying long through the body and hitting the mat ideally uh, flat or a little bit toes first. You want to watch out for a loose body where the chest or the stomach hits around first. You can couple that with the the uh, entry over the handstand, so either through the pike or through the dish body shape as well. You need to make sure they're strong in the handstand before you start getting into the giant swing. Being able to push tall through the shoulders. 
and also good core strength. So you can see Ben practicing his shoulder shrugs and also his pelvic tilt. Two, two very important uh, postural exercises for a handstand. And also being strong in that shoulder flexion by opening shoulders in that overbalanced handstand. And again the pelvic tilt with a different body orientation. You can check these positions with the coach assistance as well. Bending your knees up, it's going to shorten, uh, not shorten, it's going to move the centre of gravity closer to the bar. So tucking your knees moves the centre of gravity closer to the bar. You can also pike your hips, that will also move the centre of gravity closer to the bar. Or dishing through your body will do the same. So using loops and gloves allows the gymnast to experience more swings in a single set. They don't have to worry about slipping out so much as long as you've got a good fit and um, they're quite comfortable in their wrists, you can easily do 10 or 15 swings in a single set. So with a basic swing you can understand that concept of moving the, the centre of gravity closer to the bar on the way up and then extending that centre of gravity away from the bar on the way down. So you're generating more power on the way down and moving that centre of gravity closer to the bar increases your, your rotational speed so your swing will get higher on each swing. You can either do that through bending your knees at each end of the swing, or you can do it by bending your hips or bending your body. Bending your hips and your body requires a little bit more coordination, so you need to practice that firstly just in tension swings under the bar, either moving, bending through the hips or bending through the body. Generally, through the body is considered a bit more powerful. To show that they've got good power, then they can they can turn that from the tension swing, pulling right up to the bar, just to accentuate that that movement of the body. So you can see Ben now using the pike swing. Piking your body moves the centre of gravity closer to the bar, which is going to increase his rotational speed and will go higher in the swing. Finally, a more contemporary version is through the chest or through a dish shape. It's a bit more subtle than the pike. And of course in competition, bending the knees would be an execution error. You can see when Ben's learning, you can accentuate that position past handstand and extend after handstand rather than to handstand. In there. Move the gymnast onto a grip bar or bare hands if you're using a wooden bar. <coughs> the, the rotation of the grip comes at the end of the giant. It's that moment of weightlessness of the swing allows you to rotate your grip, preparing for the next giant swing. That's it for Coach's Corner today. So thanks a lot for coming in, Andrew. It's been great having you on. All right, and stay tuned for further Coach's Corners where we'll look at some more advanced skills.